How McDonald's Really Makes Its Money Hey everyone, and welcome back to Wealthy Value. Let's jump right in and talk about McDonald's. You know them, you probably love them, or at least have eaten there before. Maybe they were even your first job as a kid. Personally, I still miss the Arch Deluxe Burger. Almost ever since founding of the McDonald's Corporation in 1955, McDonald's has become a part of the culture. But even with over 38,000 locations in 120 countries around the world, you may be surprised to learn that most of their money doesn't come from their food sales. So, in today's video, we are going to be talking about how McDonald's really makes its money. But before we get on to that, go ahead and like and subscribe if you haven't already. Every week we post videos about investing to help you build long-lasting wealth and master the future of finance. Also, make sure to stay until the end to see how McDonald's really makes its money. It probably isn't what you think. And without any further ado, let's get to the meat of this video. Now, before we move on, I wanted to give a brief history on McDonald's. The first McDonald's burger stand was opened in 1940 in San Bernardino, California by brothers Richard and Maurice McDonald. That's right, the name wasn't thought up by marketing people, it was actually named after the founders. Despite their initial founding, it was in 1948 that McDonald's revolutionized the fast food industry as we know it. How did they do that? By introducing their speedy service system, this made them one of the first fast food restaurants as we know it. Today we're used to the idea of fast food. Order something, pay, and it's brought to you in a short order, pre-wrapped and ready to eat anywhere. But prior to that, it was still an era where a fast dining experience meant driving your car up to a restaurant and having a waitress attach a tray to the side of your car. The trays naturally held your food, but also the plates and utensils. So it was an easy way to grab a meal on the run, but it wasn't all that quick. Plus, as you can imagine, the system led to all sorts of mishaps. McDonald's themselves operated very much this way until 1948. With McDonald's new system, you lined up and you ordered a pre-made, pre-wrapped burger which you could eat anywhere. Great for people on the go and no more cutlery to deal with. As great as that was for the brothers, it was in 1955 when things really took a turn towards the company we know today. That was when traveling salesman Ray Kroc joined the company as a franchise agent and not too long after Ray founded the McDonald's Corporation. By 1961, Ray would force the brothers out of the company they founded. If you've ever seen the movie The Founder, some of this may seem familiar to you. If you haven't seen the movie, I highly recommend it. Ever since the company has grown to where, according to Wikipedia, they serve 69 million customers a day worldwide. In fact, in 2019, McDonald's made an estimated $21.06 billion. Yet, as previously mentioned, despite all their success, their mostly delicious food isn't their main moneymaker. If you've been inside a McDonald's restaurant, you've probably noticed the little display case full of toys that McDonald's sells with their Happy Meals. The toys are generally movie tie-ins for whatever the latest kid-friendly movies are. These can range from things like balls, action figures, and so on. In some cases, the toys are catching the latest trend of the moment, like when McDonald's had their own Beanie Babies. So, it's natural to think that a good chunk of their money would come from their fast food toys, especially when you factor in the collectors who have to have them all. I still remember playing with my Batman Returns cars I got from my local McDonald's way back in 1992. Yes, the writer of this is old but it doesn't make that movie any less awesome. It also can't be denied, like any company, they see a spike in sales during certain promotions, such when they run their month-long Monopoly game in which certain food items like a Big Mac have a sticker that looks like a tile on a Monopoly board. The goal being to collect as many tiles as you can for prizes. Lower value tiles may win you free food, while higher end tiles like Boardwalk and Park Place may land you bigger prizes, such as a car. This is a game I have played and lost many times. I admit, most times I go to McDonald's, it is typically during Monopoly month. Of course, they may also see sales spikes when they introduce limited-time food items, 
such as the already mentioned McRib, or even when they launch their own pizza. You heard that right. For a short time, McDonald's had their own pizza. In fact, I very much remember eating a McDonald's pizza with my family while sitting in a McDonald's that was right next to a Pizza Hut. That still seems absurd to this day. But I would still totally go for McDonald's pizza if they brought it back. So by this point, you may be wondering, how do they really make most of their money? And the answer is probably best summed up by a quote from former McDonald's chief financial officer, Harry J. Sonneborn, who reportedly told investors, we are not basically in the food business, we are in the real estate business. Wait, what? That doesn't make any sense, right? The company that gave us the Big Mac, the McNugget, the McRib, and I can't stress enough how much I miss it, the Arch Deluxe, is in the real estate business? How does that make sense? Well, the answer to that goes back to our friend Ray Kroc. To be more specific, it's due to something that Ray brought to the company. Franchising. But it goes beyond even that. If you aren't aware how franchising works, it basically goes like this. You, the investor, pay a fee to a company like McDonald's for the right to open your own McDonald's store. The advantage to owning a franchise in an existing chain is that it usually comes with built-in brand recognition and a support system. So it's much easier to join the team for a fee as opposed to open your own business and start from scratch. In regards to McDonald's, franchising is basically their main business. According to an article published by Medium.com, 93% of the McDonald's restaurants worldwide aren't directly owned by the McDonald's corporation. Instead, they are owned by, you guessed it, franchise owners. The thing is, that isn't all. Like mentioned in the earlier quote, they are in the real estate business. Because franchise owners aren't just paying for the name and to be a part of the company, they are actually renting the land where the physical store sits for McDonald's itself. The McDonald's corporations actually own the land. According to the same article, in order to open your own McDonald's franchise, you need the following. $250,000 to $500,000 in non-borrowed cash, the financial stability to borrow up to $1,700,000 extra, $45,000 to pay McDonald's right away. Then you have to do a nine-month intensive training course on how to run a restaurant the McDonald's way. This is to make sure that all of the restaurants are run with the same quality standards, so you know that your customers will get the same type of service no matter where in the world they go to a McDonald's. But that isn't all. As a franchise owner, you also need to agree to a 20-year contract for one specific location that McDonald's chooses. As well, you, the franchise owner, agree to pay 4% of your monthly sales, plus a large flat rental fee or a rental fee based on your monthly sales. Build up the entire interior of the location according to their specifications on your own dime. They've already had the property developed and the building constructed and buy any new equipment at your own expense for the next 20 years. So you can quickly see where the company's revenue really begins to add up. On paper, the desire to own a part of a successful, globally known company has obvious appeal. But like Pandora's box, things that are appealing may come with consequences. In the case of McDonald's, the consequence is the financial strain it can put on the franchise owners. Like any company that has had long-term success, one of McDonald's biggest strengths has been their overall ability to evolve and change. From their packaging, such as getting rid of styrofoam containers, to their menu evolution, to include things like breakfast items, to updating their ingredients in an effort to make their food more healthy, such as most recently introducing the McPlant, plant-based burger in 2020. Not to mention the way their ordering has changed. That's right, kids. You couldn't always stand in front of a giant tablet and just order and pay for your food with a few button presses or have slightly warm McDonald's delivered to your door by an underpaid courier with just a few button presses on your phone. With 2020 changing the way many of us live, it will be interesting to see how they continue to evolve. Well guys, that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Do you have any favorite discontinued McDonald's food items? Be sure to tell us in the comments below. Click the links above to check out some of our other videos. Also, 
Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this. See you in the next video.